And I'll take you to Abuja, where a rice correspondent, Binga Ashi, rejoins us uh, for more update on a two-story building that collapsed in Lagos Street in Abuja. Binga, it's good to have you with us. Uh, some are seen there uh, behind you, and of course, we can see all the excavators, as it were. So the initial reports we got was that uh, this happened after a large uh, rainfall. Uh, what more can you tell us? Yeah, we've been here at the popular Lagos streets uh, keeping a vigilant uh, watch on the excavation operation going on at the popular Lagos street in Gariki. Uh, it's quite unfortunate, like I told you earlier, that this building caved in in the last 13 hours around 11 p.m. yesterday night and rescue operations, search and rescue operations have been going on since then. Uh, it's been a race to ground zero. Uh, like I also told you, 37, people, uh, 37 persons were rescued uh, while two were fatally injured. Uh, it's important we get, uh, we hold some of the gatekeepers as responsible. We have the DG of the FCT Emergency Management Agency uh, that will be here to answer a few questions that, that will give you an insight into what really happened. Uh, the last time we spoke with him, he said that uh, we, he's not been able to lay his hands on a concrete preliminary investigation, preliminary findings on the building collapse. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Idris Abbas, the DG of FCT Emergency Management Agency. So now it's uh, a few minutes past one. Uh, what can you give us in terms of preliminary uh, findings on this building collapse? Well, so far so good. We have reached ground zero and uh, we have called off the operations. Uh, the operations is over and we have not gotten any additional uh, person under the rubbles. So, uh, so far uh, 37 people were rescued and two were fatally injured. And like I told you, the investigation will take place immediately after the operations and uh, the uh, Nigerian builders and uh, uh, Nibri are here who are going to really, uh, they are professionals in terms of uh, uh, such uh, investigation. And uh, they will do that, and the Director of Development Control is also here, who are responsible for giving approvals for all the buildings in the LCT. So this will give us uh, a, a time to sit down and look at it. Like I promise you, within two weeks we should come up with why this building collapsed, and also with uh, possible uh, remedies. Okay, uh, Dr. Idris Abbas has made us to understand that um, Preliminary investigations are still on, and in, within two weeks, it will be letting us in into what happened and who should we hold responsible. Uh, will this go like the regular uh, events or, and that people will go back to sleep? Uh, this shouldn't be. The FCT minister, a while ago, about uh, two hours ago, also read the riot act that action must be taken and a promise to do just that. Uh, we have um, a representative of the building control uh, here uh, with, with us. Uh, this is another agency that is responsible for giving approval and his name is uh, Mr. Mukhtar Galadima. Uh, Mr. Mukhtar, uh, what can you say? Uh, did you give approval for this building that just collapsed? No, no, no. No approval granted. This is uh, within the Garaki village community. The place is an indigenous community. So it's an organic settlement that was not planned, and so no uh, allocation to that land. So it's just a building that uh, sprang up within a community. So no plan, no approval. Uh, while they were giving the briefing to the FCC minister, we were uh, told that this area is, um, is earmarked for APO resettlement. Am I right? Yes, it's for resettlement. Because so what have you done to ensure that uh, the, the purpose is, uh, is, is being upheld? Uh, well... We have the Apo Resettlement Town, fully developed. It's just for the relevant uh, authority to relocate them to the, uh, the town. That is Department of Resettlement and Compensation. So everything has been done. And I know one obstacle that is remaining, that is the development of the chief's palace. Because the Garki has a chief, so it is uh, expected when he's relocating, there should be another palace. So that is what is holding the resettlement uh, till date. Okay, so from your findings now, what can you say is responsible for this building caving in yesterday night at 11 p.m.? No, you see, we have to be scientific. I cannot just make a wild guess and say that this is what happened. But uh, we have to be scientific, uh, just like my uh, colleagues from other professional bodies made some, uh, 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 convey some specimens. We have to investigate what could have been the cause. Could it be 
the materials concerned? Could it be no proper swell as investigation? So that uh, at the end of the day, we can say this is what uh, happened. It leaves a very painful and traumatic commentary to imagine that just f barely five months ago, we were at Guarimpa uh, mourning the building collapse that happened at 7th uh, Avenue in Guarimpa. And just now, August, this same year, we are now at uh, Gariki. So what are you doing to uh, ensure that uh, there wouldn't be such a reoccurrence? Or uh, what have you done? Because when you look at the whole of this area, um, let, let my camera uh, man take an overview of this area. Most of these buildings are emaciated. You can, you can attest to this. Yes. So uh, what are you doing to ensure that uh, they meet up with the integrity test uh, what, of this building? What uh, we have done before, we have already carried out sensitization exercise for owners of such buildings to ensure that uh, the, the uh, structures are tested. But now, going further, one, we are going to meet with relevant professional regulatory bodies we are going to meet with relevant consultants, identify all the structures in town, conduct these tests, and then wherever we find failure, the, st the structure will go. Secondly, we have also we are in liaison with the National Insurance Commission to ensure that all construction sites are insured, including even completed structures, because we believe by doing that, maintenance will come in and everybody will check whatever he's doing on site to make sure that there is no casualty. Yeah, what people are saying now, and I want you to respond to it, is that they are saying after every rescue operation, that development control unit go back to sleep. Is that true? It's not true. If we are sleeping, then the city will just be in chaos. It's not true. We are just like the police. Nobody will say, you are doing well. Until when it is bad, they will say, oh, you are not doing good. What I'm saying in effect is that this is one of the most important agencies in, in FCT. And I can beat my chest and say it everywhere. Because without development control, this city will be in chaos. And I mean it, and I can say it anywhere. Thank you very much indeed. It's my pleasure. Yeah, and, and you, you, you can hear, uh, you've heard him, and uh, now there's so much uncertainty. And uh, what's the reason behind this uncertainty? There's a riot of questions. There's a, there's a, there's a whole uh, um, atmosphere shrouded with so much uncertainty, so much pain, so much traumatic experience. And the big question is, who knows when next another building will be caving in. Uh, when you look at the overview of this area, this community, this settlement, there are emaciated buildings. We understand that this building was uh, built in the early 80s, and we, we've not even confirmed the nature of um, the building, the quality of the building materials, if it meets the building integrity test. So from the Lagos Street in Gariki Market, this is another sad and tragic commentary we bring to you. Uh, we hope that the government will listen and come up with a spirited effort, a determined effort to ensure that this does not repeat itself again. Because we are talking about millions of, uh, mi 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 um, uh, property worth millions of Naira being, being destroyed. Uh, it, this is a needless strategy, uh, tragedy that, have, have, uh, uh, that needs to be prevented at all costs. Thank you so much, Ogbenga Ashiri, reporting live there from Abuja.